I'm pretty sure that when you hear the zodiac sign Cancer, you think of probably one of two words, either sensitive or moody, right? And you wouldn't be wrong. Cancer is the first water sign of the zodiac. It is like the pure element of water. So yes, Cancer, especially Cancer rising, tends to be very sensitive, moody, defensive, protective, and nurturing. Yet, of course, just like all the other rising signs, there's so much more. Like, I bet you probably didn't think that Cancer energy, especially Cancer rising, can be extremely ruthless in business. Nor would you imagine that in committed relationships, relationships where we experience love, commitment, and depth, cancer can be a little cold, not as warm and nurturing as maybe you think they would be. And when it comes to family, that is where cancer really shines and where togetherness and relation are of the utmost importance. So again, so much more than meets the eye. All right, so we're keeping the party going with this rising sign series. And today's video is all about cancer rising. So I will be explaining everything you need to know about cancer rising in the natal chart. So stick around, you definitely don't wanna miss this. Hello, my loves. As always, I hope that this video finds you well and in excellent spirits. If this is our first time meeting, welcome. My name is Mel. I'm a professional astrologer and I'm the founder of Divine Feminine Works, where I help people unlock their divinity and discover their magic. And as always, if you are returning, welcome back. So today's video is all about Cancer Rising, all right? So we're keeping this series going. As a reminder, each week I'll be coming out with a new video on another rising sign until I finish the entire zodiac. So currently we are up to Cancer. So before we get into all of the juicy, and I use juicy intentionally because Cancer is a water sign, get it? <laughs> before we get into all of the juicy details, let's talk about rising signs generally, specifically how rising signs are part of your big three. So in astrology, we have what we call the big three, which are your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign. All right. I did a video all about it. If you want to know more, the link will be in the description box below. And this is it right here. All right. So your big three basically are the main facets of your personality. So your sun sign is all about your outward expression, right? The sun shines and your sun sign will show how you shine. <laughs> Try saying that 10 times fast. It's your outward expression. It's your personality. It's sort of your subjective personality because it all depends on your uniqueness, all right? Then we have your moon sign, whereas your sun sign represents your outward personality and everything sort of external. Your moon sign represents everything internal and your inward personality. So the sun shines outwardly, the moon shines inwardly. So the moon sign has a lot to do with your emotions, your subconscious, your um, intimate environment. Your moon sign also represents what you sort of keep hidden from the world. So sun is public, moon is private. And then finally, we have your rising sign. Your rising sign is the objective facet of your personality. And I say that because your sun sign has a lot to do with how you express yourself. Your moon sign has a lot to do with your inner world, which you don't let the world see. And so your rising sign is like the sign that you wear. It's the mask that you wear. It's the billboard that you hold up that tells the world who you are. Long story short, your rising sign is how the world perceives you, hence why it's objective. So sometimes people find that they don't necessarily resonate with their sun sign too much, or maybe they don't necessarily resonate with their moon sign. However, they do resonate with their rising sign because it's almost like your rising sign is the feedback that you get about yourself from the outside world, hence why it is objective, all right? And so the big three make up this whole facet of who you are personality-wise. That's why it's so important, all right? So without further ado, let's get into Cancer Rising. And as always, we start with the basics. All right, so let's talk about rising signs generally. 
So I already spoke about how your rising sign is part of your big three, but what exactly is a rising sign? Clearly, you know that your sun sign is determined by the date you were born. Also, your moon sign is determined by the date that you were born. Whereas your rising sign is actually determined not only by the date that you were born, but the precise time that you were born. And it's so important that you get the precise time because the rising sign changes every two hours. All right. So let me backtrack a little bit and explain exactly what the rising sign is. So the definition of the rising sign is that the rising sign was the sign that was rising on the eastern horizon the moment that you were born. Think of it as the sunrise and what sign was rising at the time that you were born. That's why having your precise birth time is so important because that sign that's rising on the eastern horizon changes every two hours. So you, the difference between being born at 8 a.m and 1 p.m. could be two completely different rising signs. Now, precise birth time is obviously the information that people have the most issue with. Either you have no idea, it's not on your birth certificate, clearly you wouldn't remember, right? But the people who were there when you were born may not have the best memory, right? I, I think your mom was a little busy at the time, so it was kind of hard for her to be looking at her watch while she's you know, giving birth, of course. So sometimes that can be a little dicey when it comes to getting your precise birth time. But the more precise that you can get it, the better, because it'll obviously give you a more accurate natal chart and therefore give you the most, the most accurate rising sign. Now, the, the next thing I want to talk about with rising signs is ascendant versus rising sign, because you'll hear people use the two terms interchangeably, but there is a slight, slight there's a slight nuance <laughs> to these two words. So, like I said, the rising sign is the zodiacal sign that was rising on the eastern horizon at the moment that you were born. Each zodiac sign within the astrological wheel is 30 degrees. So within that time frame of when you were born, the zodiac sign that was rising is known as the rising sign. It could be any degree, right? It's just the sign itself. Whereas your ascendant is the exact degree of the rising sign. So for instance, you could be a Gemini rising, right? And so that just means that Gemini was the sign that was on the Eastern horizon at the moment you were born. However, you could be Gemini rising at 10 degrees. So Gemini would be a rising sign. Gemini 10 degrees is your ascendant. So the ascendant merely delineates the exact degree of your rising sign. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so now let's talk about cancer energy generally. So cancer energy. Cancer as a zodiac sign is feminine, it's water, and it is cardinal. Cancer is the first of the water signs, okay? And so this is where cancer gets its sort of self-starter energy. It commences the element of water, okay? It's ultra feminine, right? Especially being that it is a feminine water sign, right? It is very much concerned with our inner world, our emotions, hence why cancer tends to get the, the connotation of being moody, right? Because the moods can change just like the tides of the ocean. A lot of times people associate cancer energy with the moon, right? Because the moon, it moves the tides of the ocean. Again, hence why cancer tends to be kind of moody, right? Very cyclical, very feminine. You see where I'm going with this, right? It's very flowy, very fluid kind of energy. However, being that it is the first sign of the zodiac, like I said, it's a self-starter. It initiates, right? Apart from that, cancer has a lot to do with intuition, it has a lot to do with psychic abilities. Every cancer I know, whether they are a cancer sun, definitely cancer moon, and to a certain extent cancer rising, all of them are psychic. All of them have very prophetic dreams. Some of them are prophetesses. I, the only cancers I know are actually women actually, but I'm pretty sure the same goes for men. Very in tune with spirit, okay? So cancer, a lot of cancers also tend to be a, a vessel for spirit, a conduit for spirit as well. So that's also a wonderful cancer quality, all right? But suffice it to say, when it comes to cancer energy generally, 
It's fluid, it's sensitive, it's cyclical, and it is ultra feminine. All right, so now let's get into some of the characteristics that are associated with Cancer rising. So in terms of like characteristics or personality traits, Cancer rising means that Cancer is your first house. So when it comes to your personality, and remember I said your rising sign has, it's like the billboard that you wear. It's the sign that lets the world know who you are and what you're about, right? So Cancer rising, people tend to view you as someone who is sensitive, who is nurturing, right? Cancer energy is very emblematic of mother energy. So it's nurturing. It's like caretaker. It's soft. It's... um defensive in a way as well. And that is how the world sees you. And it's very much a part of your personality. Like people would say, oh, you know, Jennifer, she tends to be very sensitive or, you know, James is like really psychic. Like he's really in tune. He's very intuitive, right? However, again, there's so much more. So when it comes to your family, which is a major part of our lives, your fourth house, which is the house of home and family is Libra. So at home, there can be a very big emphasis on your familial relationships, particularly your relationship with your parents or your grandparents. And it's very um, chatty, right? It's very, there's a lot of communication perhaps between you and your parents or you and your grandparents, okay? You may also be be someone who finds comfort and beauty within your immediate family, all right? That kind of makes sense, okay? And I also want to say that Libra being a cardinal sign as well, just like Cancer, means that at home and with family, you guys are usually the starters, the initiators. For some, you may even, some may even say that you guys are kind of the glue that holds your family together. And you kind of are sort of a leader in that way, right? Whatever it is, you probably tend to be perhaps the favorite of the family, or you just are able to communicate and relate to a lot of people in your family, but specifically your immediate family, okay? Next up, let's talk about your committed relationships. And for you, your seventh house of relationships is Capricorn. So what I find a little interesting with Cancer Rising is that Cancer is known to be sensitive, psychic, nurturing, mothering. However, you're not necessarily really like that in your committed relationships. Now, Capricorn is also a feminine sign. So there is that element of feminine energy that you bring to your committed relationships. However, Capricorn is not very emotional. It's not very... um lovey-dovey. Capricorn is very practical. Capricorn is a hard worker. Capricorn is concerned with status and the work that goes along with status. So your relationships are a thing of status for you. It's also meant to be a thing of security. I think that you value security more than the lovey-dovey feelings and, you know, the romance. You're about, all right, I have this partner. This partner is stable. Not only is the partnership stable, but longevity and commitment are extremely important to you when it comes to your committed relationships. So although you may be nurturing, you may not necessarily be that nurturing to your partner. You're really looking for a provider, let's say that, all right? And then another major part of your, you know, characteristics of your, or your personality would be work and career. Well, let me say career, not necessarily work. I'll talk about work later. But career, you guys tend to be a little ruthless. Not only that, you are, you know, risk takers, you are aggressive even because your 10th house of career and public life is Aries. So you guys are definitely self-starters. I wouldn't be surprised if many of you are entrepreneurs since Aries is definitely an entrepreneurial kind of energy, especially when it is your 10th house. You guys know what you want. You go after it directly and that's it. It's like straight, no chaser. What you want is what you get. What you see is what you get. And you tend to be very passionate, very fiery when it comes to your career. Now you may have a career that involves physical activity. You may have a career that, a, for instance, like Aries is ruled by Mars. So Mars deals with like metal, sharp objects. You could be a surgeon. You could be someone who's in construction, using, I wouldn't say using your hands, but physical activity may definitely be a part of what you do. However, suffice it to say, you guys tend to be pretty ruthless. 
a little selfish even when it comes to your career, all right? Now, these four major areas, home and family, which is, well, you know, your personality, which is your first house, home and family, which is your fourth house, relationships, which are your seventh house, and career, which is your 10th house. These four houses are the most prominent houses in our natal charts. And so whatever comprises these four houses typically is what makes up the strongest part of our personalities. Think of it as the pillars upon which our personality rests, all right? So that's pretty much an overview of the general characteristics about Cancer Rising. Let's keep it forward. Let's keep it forward. Let's keep it moving and talk a little bit more about certain areas of your life that are of interest. All right. So there's three areas of life that people typically want to know the most about. And th those three are relationships, money, and work and or career. All right. So first, let's talk relationships. Now, we already talked about this before when we talked about your seventh house of relationships. And to reiterate, your seventh house is Capricorn. So when it comes to relationships, they may not necessarily be lovey-dovey. However, you do require them to be stable and long lasting. All right. Now, the other house that we will discuss in terms of relationships is the fifth house of romance. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to talk about romantic relationships. There are other houses that deal with other relationships like friends, friends, family, all that stuff. But typically people want to know about their love life. So you would look to the seventh house of committed relationships. So that's like your house of marriage. And the fifth house is going to be the house of romance or the house of dating. And for you, your fifth house is Scorpio. Now, Scorpio is a water sign just like cancer. And so you may find that in romantic relationships, you tend to be uh, very comfortable with emotions. Now, Scorpio loves things intense, kind of hot and heavy and deep and substantive. So you require your romantic partners to be deep to be substantive, to be able to swim in the waters of your... <laughs> Just realized that could sound kind of dirty. To swim in the waters of your emotions, okay? <laughs> Let's keep it clean. Um, but yes, when it comes to romance, it's about depth. It's about vulnerability, specifically emotional vulnerability. So things tend to get hot and heavy when dating for you. But when it comes to relationships, it's like, all right, that depth and stuff, that's great. That's a great foundation. However, I need stability and longevity when it comes to marriage. All right. Next up, let's talk about money. And to examine money in our lives, we look at two different houses. The first is going to be the second house of personal finances. So that's your money, how you make money. And then the eighth house is going to be the house of shared money, like with a spouse or, you know, other people's money generally and the house of debt. So for you, your second house is going to be Leo. So when it comes to your personal finances, the way that you make money has very Leo-like characteristics. So you may be a leader, you may be a boss, you may be someone who stands out. Leo is very front-facing energy. It's very leader, it's very main character energy. So suffice it to say, when it comes to how you make money, you may make money based on your looks, perhaps. You may make money based on your leadership role. You are definitely someone who leads other people. So you are a boss, manager, supervisor, or you typically find yourself in those kind of positions at work if you work for someone else. Leo has a lot to do with drama. So some of you may be actors or actresses. Others of you may uh, work in entertainment even. Okay, that may be how you make your money. Now, when it comes to other people's money, shared money, that house for you is the eighth house and your eighth house is Aquarius. So when it comes to debt or when it comes to other people's money, things seem to be either weird or out of the box or out of the ordinary. Perhaps you have a very non-traditional sort of setup when it comes to you and your spouse's money. Or perhaps when it comes to things like loans, mortgages, things like that, you have a very weird setup or a non-traditional setup or something that just deviates from the norm. 
For others of you, shared resources may have a lot to do with Aquarian-like things. So typically, or sometimes I should say, the eighth house will really describe your partner and their funds, specifically in the case of like a marriage. So maybe your partner is in tech. Maybe your partner makes money online. Maybe your partner invents things, is an inventor, has a patent, right? I am doing a webinar in a couple of weeks, actually not a couple of weeks, next week, all about love and money in the natal chart. And I will enumerate more on the eighth house and how it can describe not only love and intimacy, but also your spouse's money. So sometimes people don't pay attention to that kind of information when they're getting married. However, they'll be married to someone and be like, oh yeah, my husband is in tech. Or yeah, oh, my wife does, you know, have an e-commerce store, right? with Aquarius being your eighth house. But either way, when it comes to other people's money, shared resources, things are definitely non-traditional, outside of the box, or very futuristic. And finally, let's talk about work and career. So we talked about career before with that being your 10th house of Aries. You're definitely a self-starter, you're on fire, you can probably be ruthless in your career. Now your career is your overarching career, your vocation, your life purpose even. Whereas when you want to find out information about your nine to five job or what you do on a daily basis, you would look to your sixth house. And for you, your sixth house is Sagittarius. So when it comes to your day to day activities, you may be involved or your nine to five, I should say, you may be involved in foreign affairs. You may have a job in law, higher education. Maybe you travel a lot for work, whether you are going long, typically it'd be long distance, right? Even if you have a long commute to work every day, that would be evidenced by Sagittarius as your sixth house. Sagittarius is everything to do with things that are foreign. So there may be an element of difference or something foreign in what you do on a daily basis. Maybe you're talking to people who are different languages, who different languages, who speak different languages, who are different culturally from you, right? Maybe you do business overseas, right? Maybe if you're like in finance and you have to work with people who are in London or Tokyo or something like that right? Maybe you are in law. You could be a lawyer. You could work in the legal field or in higher education. Maybe you work for a university or maybe you teach, right? You could also have a very spiritual element to your job because Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter has to do with spirituality and belief. So maybe that is infused in your day-to-day -day activities and your nine to five, right? So you see how all of these things start to work together and sort of make sense about how you're not just moody and crabby, right? There's so much more to you than that. And there's even more because now I'm gonna talk about what you may or may not know about Cancer Rising. So we all have a shadow side, right? That side of ourselves that we may not even be aware of. What's super duper hidden, probably even from us. And it's important to understand our shadow side because our shadow side makes appearances sometimes, sometimes at the most inopportune times. However, our shadow side sometimes dictates not only what we do subconsciously, but what we experience in our reality, okay? And so to understand our shadow side, to understand what's hidden from us, we would look to the 12th house. So full transparency. By the time that I got to this point in the video, my brain was pretty fried. So rather than saying that the 12th house for Cancer Rising is Gemini, which it in fact is, I actually said that the 12th house for Cancer Rising was Taurus. And I went on for about five minutes explaining how Taurus was your shadow side, which is completely incorrect. So here's the correct information. As a Cancer rising, your 12th house is Gemini. So while people may know you as someone who is sensitive, who's psychic, who's moody, who's nurturing, who's protective, you know, all of those Cancer rising characteristics, your shadow side and who you are on the inside is someone who is quite logical, quite intellectual, and very, very curious. Now, one of the hallmark characteristics of Gemini specifically is that they are eternal students and teachers. It's like they take the world around them as a huge classroom. 
And so your curiosity may have you researching into certain things. It may have you wanting to learn things and sort of being a teacher on the low. You guys are very um, cerebral on the inside. So whereas you would think that as a Cancer rising, you would be overrun by your emotions, Quite literally, it's the opposite for you. When we're talking about your inner world and your subconscious, it's ordered, it's logical, and you process things logically, particularly your emotions. Now, I love this juxtaposition because you are able to feel things easily, right? As a hallmark, a hallmark quality of cancer rising. However, how you deal with your feelings, how you internalize what you feel you do it in a very logical sort of way, which is extremely interesting to me. So everyone gives you guys that sort of connotation of emotional, sensitive, crybabies, whatever, right? And I mean no shade by that. But you guys are really logical. You guys are very intellectual. And maybe that is a side of your personality that you should explore more, that you should get to know more. Because again, our 12th house represents what's hidden to us. It represents the side of ourselves that other people don't see. And again, that usually we don't see as well. And so there's much to learn about your emotions from a logical perspective when you really tap into your 12th house Gemini energy. Now, one of the words I love to use for Gemini generally is mixy. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Gemini is all over the place. Gemini is the multitasker, chatty Kathy. Gemini is just very social and communicative. And while that Cancerian energy that you imbue and that you embody so much can tend to be a homebody, can be kind of quiet, can really be in your emotions, there's a side of yourself that's, uh, dare I say, extroverted and very chatty and very communicative and, you know, perhaps really likes to socialize with people. So again, that's definitely a part of your personality that you may want to explore, right? Interesting, interesting information. All right, my loves, so that concludes this video on Cancer Rising. I sincerely hope that you were able to get at least one important piece of information that you can use and that you find valuable. So tune in next week or I'll be continuing this series and we will be examining Leo Rising, which should definitely be interesting as hell. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want information on my products and services, they're either tagged to the video or in the description box below. Again, thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video. Take care.